Welcome back, friends and rail fans. Blue skies and sunshine are back, so let's go for a trip. This southbound MPDRV is just leaning into the switch points of Irving Siding at control point CPVP 653. This train departed Portland at 5.15 a.m., five hours and 40 minutes ago. And taking Irving Siding here is step one to getting the train into Eugene Yard. Even though this is a Portland to Roseville train, it has work to do here in Eugene, setting out cars and picking up cars. Though that isn't the case for every PDRV, this one, like many others, won't pass Eugene without doing work. With the beautiful weather beckoning and the good fortune of having the yard work cut up and not being called to work, I grabbed my camera and headed south to see what I could find. What I found was that for the first four trains I shot, it was grab and go as they were arriving on scene as I was. I immediately headed south down Northwest Expressway to find the YEU-16 switching cars on the south end of the yard.
The 16R is a 630 AM remote control job, which switches primarily on the south end of the yard and here is utilizing zone 2 while on the 50 lead. The old SP engine house across the way is now owned by the Central Oregon and Pacific Railroad. Only but a few minutes later, and on the opposite side of the yard, I found a northbound RVEU coming up the WP at CPVP 648. Currently passing the Amtrak depot, this train left Klamath Falls at 2 a.m. There are 10 crossings that Union Pacific has to blow for on the Brooklyn Sub in Eugene, at least here in the downtown area. Whether or not to turn this into a quiet zone has been in debate for over a decade here. Until then, no less than 40 horn blasts will be heard every time a train comes through. The steel cylinders here are almost to their spot location. They are bound for M&P Reload, which is a distribution warehouse. 713 track where they will be placed is the first customer in the old yard, and the spur comes off the south portion of the Y tracks that connect the Coos Bay line to the Eugene yard. M&P Reload sees frequent deliveries of this product. These new Greenbrier built wood chip cars, the first new wood chip cars built, to my knowledge, since the 1970s, are stenciled LFPX for Lane Forest Products here in Eugene and will be loaded near the tank farm on the north end of the yard. Before starting down the WP, which leads into the yard, trains receive instructions from management. Then they must job brief with the south switcher, and if their route should take them through the zone, they must get authorization from them before entering. While a remote control zone is active, only one train at a time may be authorized to enter. Otherwise, the zone must be deactivated and point protection provided. It looks like right now there's a loaded manifest heading south an hour out of town. So, let's catch up with it.
We're heading down Highway 58, which parallels the line along Lookout Point Reservoir, with a beautiful view of 9,000 foot high Diamond Peak in the distance. Hampton Siding has now been home for these stored covered hoppers for over five years. And there's exactly 100 of these two bay covered hoppers rusting to the rails. It looks like our southbounder has made it to McCready Springs to meet Amtrak. I'm just gunning for the crossing in the middle of McCready, hoping that I get there before 14 arrives. Fortune is on my side as no sooner that I stepped out of the car, Amtrak showed up, and then clear signals for our southbounder, which has helpers on the rear. In a moment, you're going to hear slack in the banging knuckles. You can figure that this is where the balance of weight is differentiated between the part being pulled and the part being shoved.
I turned off Highway 58 and headed up the access roads towards Fields. But first, we're going to see the train here at the Old Slide location. At this location, there's a short permanent speed restriction of 20 miles per hour, but this train has received a further restriction of 15. The land here has shown a propensity to move on its own, so it's been named the slide, although the real slide now is Fraser, which dumped the whole mountainside down into the valley, cutting the railroad in two places in 2008. In hindsight, I wish I had filmed from the other side, which would have been more sunny. I just wasn't sure if I was going to cut away and try to head up to fields to try to catch the head end there. You live and learn. It just means I'll have to come back this summer. Up the hill a little bit farther down the road, and we come to Fields Siding. Also here at Fields, we find that the railroad has turned east once again. For the last eight miles or so, the railroad has ran west, up the south flank of the Salt Creek Canyon, gaining elevation. The hairpin turn to reverse direction is almost completely done within Tunnel 16. I arrived just in time to see the train stop for maintenance of way that has track and time blocking them ahead. Fields, approximately halfway up the mountain, has a few spurs and a Y track.
far as the lighting and positioning with this train, I really couldn't win today. Yet I still felt it was something worth sharing. Heading back down the hill, saw this piece of equipment at the slide. I don't know much about it, but I know it's been in the area for a few weeks. It's owned by Loram, and on the side it says Railvac. So I think its job is to clean the tracks of foreign materials. In any case, I guess I can add it to the list of the theme of the day of last second grab shots. I know in the Northwest, people have different reasons for being drawn outdoors. For me, it's enjoying God's beautiful creation and finding man's rails he laid through it. Now we're here on Dexter Hill, expecting a PWRV to show up around this bend in just a few moments. We're about two miles into the grade, which extends from Duggan to Minnow for about 10 miles of 0.8%. Biting into the grade, the train will slow down to 24 miles per hour. From this vantage along Lookout Point Reservoir, we see the train rounding a bend at Minnow Siding. Once the train's pulled up onto the level water grade, speeds for the next few miles can increase to 50 miles per hour track speed until it lowers to 45 around mile pole 597.
It would appear Dan has spotted me. This train is ultimately destined for problems on the mountain and will not make it past fields tonight.
Let's head just a little bit south of Oak Ridge where the grade begins and listen to the helpers putting onto the train. Here we're set up just south of Dunning Road Crossing. That's the sound of the helpers blowing for Beach Street Crossing. And we're 20 on the bridge. There we go, the draw, Dan, ready to go. All right, kicking them off, there we go. South Pryor out. The helpers from the last train we saw are just arriving at Pryor, and we'll meet the southbound there. And we're leaning. Pulling. That would prove to be an accurate premonition.
The direct current DC SD70Ms don't provide the same adhesion and traction on the rails as the GE ACs do. And when the temperature warms up, they derate. That means they lose their ability to provide power and add their dead weight to an already struggling train. And that's what happens today as they lose their third locomotive in SD70. And this tends to happen in the tunnels where the oxygen gets choked out by the diesel fumes. The helpers knock down the advanced approach signal at mile pole 577.4 on approach to Oak Ridge, where they'll put the power away and tie up for the day. Until somewhere around the year 2000, Dunning Road Crossing was home to a set of wigwag signals. One final stop on my journey back into town to meet the family for dinner, and that's meeting Amtrak 11 here at Natron. The train's just passing through high-wide detectors located at mile pole 616.0. However, recently the high-wide portion was removed from service, reducing it to a hot box dragging equipment detector. Down to only five coaches, this is the shortest starlight I've ever seen. Did I drop it? Yeah, I did. Figured it was new, it didn't look like a mini for a while, did I drop it? I don't think I did. Okay. It's been a fantastic day, Railside, working on a tan and brushing specks of steel and sand off my shoes. Let's recap some of our best moments of the day out on the right of way.
Be sure to come back real soon because there's always more to see at PRP. PRP.